Let's just bring in an ODB file and see how Sherlock works. Import ODB archive. Let's go to our Windows C program file, ANSYS Inc. Again, because I'm using uh, ANSYS 2020R2, I'm going to go to V202, but you will go into the folder, the latest folder that you have. V202 and Sherlock folder, tutorial. There is the ODB tutorial.tgz. Double click, it will open up the, uh, the ODB. Now we have to give our project name. Let's just give it the uh, name tutorial. And then we have to give our circuit card a name. Let's just call it PCB. And now here it says press the uh, scan archive button after selecting the desired ODB plus plus scan archive. If you know about property mapping, this is how you uh, mess around with it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Click OK. And then here Sherlock is telling us what is about to happen. It's going to add a project called tutorial. It's going to add a circuit card called PCB all the way down to it's going to add a drill holes 01. So import archive and wait. While you see these clock symbols, that means Sherlock is running. So once that's done, which is right now, that means uh, you, the project is, is loaded. Before I go into the detail of what's underneath PCB, which is our circuit card, I'm going to minimize all these and to show you what the project looks like. So this is a project called tutorial. It always has a life cycle. It automatically loads a basic life cycle, which we will cover. And then your circuit card, which is PCB, which is uh, information came from the ODB file. And before we go any of those details, let's just right click on the project itself. We have the project properties which you can change the project name if you want, and then write down a description. I usually recommend you start with a short project name, and then you can have uh, lines and lines of descriptions here. And you can delete a project. If you delete a project, it goes for good. You cannot recover it. So make sure that this is a, uh, a one-time thing. You delete it, it's gone. You can close the project. If I close it, the symbol, the folder symbol turns into this uh, little block here. You can see if I click on any of these closed uh, projects, nothing will happen. Now, the way you open a project is right click and open a project. Uh, we recommend you to have one open project at a time. Two reasons for it. If I open this other project, number one, you can see that these will look very similar to one another. So you don't want to be mistakenly working in this trace modeling uh, project uh, meaning that you're working on this project. That's one thing. The other thing is if you have multiple projects open at the same time, they consume uh, RAM and core. So if you close it, then all of your uh, machine power is focused on that uh, project that you have open. Next, you can export a project. This will be a uh, export to a zip file that you can uh, save that zip mail it to your coworkers or mail it to, sometimes you need us to troubleshoot, you will send it to us and then we will open up that zip and the exact same thing will pop open for us. We have a lot IP model export, which pretty much uh, logs all of the uh, design details. So if you wanna send something, some uh, project that has a, uh, secret information in there to someone outside of your organization or someone you don't want them to see the details of the design, you can export it at the locked IP model and uh, that way you can protect your design. They, however, they can still run analysis on it. They can run analysis, but they cannot see any kind of an image of how that board looks like, what kind of components is on it. So that, that's all locked out. And then you can add a circuit card just like the project, if you add a circuit card, it will be a blank circuit card, or you can import a circuit card. So you can have multiple circuit cards in your, in your project. This could be an assembly, or you can have separate circuit cards for whatever reason. And the rest are very self-explanatory. 